Hey, welcome to another episode of In the Business. I'm Juan Alanis, and I'm excited for the conversation today. I've got a good friend of mine, Jose Avalos, who's joining us, who's doing really interesting things around uh, Tech 23, and I'll let him get much more into that and to explain to that, um, explain to us what that means. But Jose, thank you, welcome for be- and thank you for being here. Absolutely, Juan. Thank you for having me. Es un placer estar aquí contigo, con nuestro padrino. I'll talk about that a little <laughs> bit later. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Tech 23, uh, media and entertainment company for the advancement of Latinos in tech. Yeah, another uh, fellow Houstonian who's doing big things <laughs> uh, in the tech space. Absolutely. So why don't we start off there, Jose? Like, tell us a little bit about since you kind of teased it, what Tech 23 is um, and what you mean by that when, when we talk about that because I think it's a really interesting concept. Yeah, so the problem we're solving, the, the reason why we created the company is because we found out <clears throat> that out of the astronomical number of Latinos that use tech every day, you know, we're using StreamYard right now to, to, to do this. It's going to be shown on multiple social media platforms. Um, to prep for this, I'm looking at, you know, YouTube and Google and stuff you would think that the number of Latinos actually in the tech companies helping build these products and helping lead the companies that own these products would be much higher than 8%. So when we found out that number, um, we were like, why? Why is it Why is it so low? Because I believe that if you talk to the Latino community and you say, hey, would you guys want higher paying jobs, less physical intensive jobs, um, opportunities to shape the future? The answer is hell yeah, we do. <laughs> Uh, and if you ask the la- the tech community, hey, would you want your end user, your you know one of your biggest users, to be involved in the creation of the technology so it serves the community better and it's it's just a much higher quality product? I believe the answer would be yes. So we, then we were left like, well, then what's going on? If both sides want each other, what's going on in the middle? Um, so we believe it's a, communi- uh, a communication issue. The way that the tech industry and the rest of STEM, because they're everybody's kind of lacking. Latino representation speaks to the community. It's um, it's either really boring or it's not culturally relevant. So entonces no ponemos atención los latinos because it's we don't you know you don't know what you don't know. So um, believing those two things that it was boring and not culturally relevant, we decided to <clears throat> create Tech 23, a media and entertainment company for the advancement of Latinos in tech, and make sure that the content we produce is exciting, it's entertaining. Um, and it is culturally relevant. Um, and we think we can be that bridge between some of these brands trying to talk to the Latino community, uh, specifically tech, if we're those people. Porque gracias a Dios sabemos español. Uh, but then we can also, you know, go into a boardroom and talk to some of these like tech executives and be that bridge in between the two people. No, I mean, I think that's really interesting because, uh, you know, I think from the perspective of cultural nuances and cultural culture, uh, I, I often was, would tell people, you know, culture is is language, you know, culture is a language mm-hmm. that unifies the Latino community because we may, whether we speak Spanish, whether we speak English, whether we, whether, you know, I think some, some folks who don't speak um, Spanish sometimes have felt that maybe they're not included or there's not mm-hmm. as much inclusivity, but one thing that transcends language is culture. So in my mind, you know, culture definitely plays a big role uh, and is kind of a language of its own. But I think that that you're right in terms of the the nuances and, you know, creating that bridge for our community to say, mm-hmm. hey, you know what, if you don't feel identified, if you don't feel um, mm-hmm. like this speaks to you, like um, allow us to find a, a way to connect with you to create some synergies yeah. where you can feel a little bit more connected to what what is, all is involved with technology, no? Absolutely. And, you know, it's you, you have a short window to do that. Because a lot of us are getting our information digitally. That's just how the world we live in. So there's millions of things trying to compete for our attention as we're scrolling through our, uh, you know, our feeds or emails. And, um, you know, we're trying to be part of that people you pay attention to through entertainment. So um, because you have such a short, like, amount of time to capture attention and, and engage and educate, 
you know, that's why we're doing our best to be culturally relevant. And, you know, one of my favorite episodes was, uh, so we have these a podcast uh, as well. It's our mm-hmm. first phase of our business is launching a podcast where we're doing an interview, uh, a 23 episode interview, because the number in Tech 23 and Tech 23 represents 22 Latin American flags, plus the 23rd flag, which is the United States flag. And our focus is on Latinos in tech within the United States. I know there's a lot of stuff going on in Latin America, but we're focused here. And that's why it's called Tech 23, right? Because it's and we're the 23rd. Yes. <laughs> I the thought 23rd, that that was yeah. genius, verdad? Like, I mean, thank you, I, thank when, you. When you explained that to me, I was like, wait, that's pretty cool. Like, <laughs> yeah. somos los 23, right? Aquí en Estados Unidos. Mm-hmm. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was, um, you know, you guys will appreciate this. And the branding and marketing, like, what can be something that can resonate with people? Something new and fresh um, that's easy to explain to people that aren't Latino as well. Um, it took me a while. We have a bunch of scratched up notebooks and everything. And eventually, as we're looking at all the names of the Latin American countries, I'm like, hey, well, there's 22 of them. I was like, what if we're the 23rd? Because the Latino here, because, you know, when I go visit Mexico or other places, they don't use the word Latino down there. Uh, they're Mexican. They're Brazilian. Mm-hmm. They're Colombian. Mm-hmm. Um, it's only until you get here that you're like, oh, OK, I'm Latino. I'm part of this bigger group and I, I get it. Um, so, yeah, that's that's where that came from. Tell me about the reception. Tell me about Yeah. Number one, it's new. So we're actually, uh, FYI, right now, if you want to get anything trademarked, it's taking like almost a year to get things trademarked. Um, so we have trademark yeah. pending the 23rd Latino um, uh, for like digital use and everything. And eventually, we, we you know, we'd like for this term to, uh, to, to get bigger. But I've explained it to Latino people and I'm like, look, this is kind of what it is and it's easy when i have the marketing material because you see all the flags uh so you see mm-hmm. you know all, and then i'm like look and then this is the last one the united states flag and then i like, oh okay i get it like it, it makes it makes sense um and then people that are more in tune into latin american history they're like well are you sure that if there's 22 latin american countries because you know <laughs> uh this and this and i was like no i get it well, as we were doing our research and trying to land on a specific number um, I saw everything from 19 to like 30 different countries. It just, it depends on a bunch of different factors. Like is Haiti considered still a Latin American country? Is Belize considered a Latin American country? So um, I can go into detail later of explaining why we chose 22, but the two in question were Belize and Haiti. Uh, those were the well, ones that were like, yeah, well, like everything else in our community, it's always a debate, right? <laughs> it's always exactly. like a debate about like you, you start getting into anything Latino and it's like, oh, well, yeah. depending on so-and-so, you know, they're, according See. to this, you know, like it's always mm-hmm. it's always up for conversation, you know, depending on who yeah. you ask, and who you talk to. But, you know, I think you, uh, as, as a business owner, we know that uh, the way you market your business, the, the story that you're able to tell. Uh, when you're able to, when you're first talking about, when you're first introducing your business matters. So that's why I, I you know, I think I was one, curious about, you know, what the reception has been so far, because it seems mm-hmm. like that uh, the name itself, Tech 23, is is almost like a conversation starter. Uh, have mm-hmm. you found that to be true uh, as you're kind of yeah. networking and building and having conversations with people? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we're here in Houston and the, the first part of the name tech, well, yeah, start for technology. That one's pretty, that's a given. Uh, but the number is what, what, where the conversation starts. And being here in Houston, the majority of our Latino population is of Mexican descent. So mm-hmm. almost by default, we just assume when we celebrate, you know, Hispanic Heritage Month coming up that, well, it's a Mexican thing. And we see mariachi and we see tacos and we see tequila. I love that. I'm from Mexican descent myself. Which are all great, right? Yeah, yeah, which are all great. Like, don't get me wrong. I mean, my family's from Guadalajara, land of tequila and mariachi. Like, that's the main San thing. Luis see. So, here, so. There you go. So it, it's always exciting. But, um, you know, I myself wasn't really exposed to other Latino like cultures. You know, I didn't know anything about Brazil or Colombia or Venezuela besides where they were on a map that's really all i was ever taught and my parents didn't really know anything and being here in houston you drive down to some of our latino pockets and it's mexican restaurants uh, that's that's the majority of what you see every once in a while you see a pupusa you know uh, in there but it's mostly mexican food so we wanted to be very intentional from the beginning at our core in our name the thing everybody sees that we're not just mexican even though uh, my co-founder my wife is also of mexican descent 
um, we wanted to be intentional that we're all of Latin America because in the future, when we're talking to you know Meta or AWS or LinkedIn or Indeed and about partnerships, we want to show them that we've been um, from the very beginning, from the birth of the company, representing all of the Latinos in the United States, not just a certain like demographic. No, there, and, and there's definitely, I feel like a, a unifying factor, you know, even though we have our, uh, you know, there's definitely differences from country of origin to, to language, to culture, to foods, etc. cetera. Uh, there's definitely difference. I mean, that's undeniable that within our community, you know, I differences a veces like we, you know, we say one thing as Mexicans and somebody from another country is like, whoa, what did you just say? And then vice versa, you know, we're like, wait, what? What did you just say? What was that word? Uh, so I, I definitely think there's differences. But at the same time, I feel like uh, if you're a Latino in the United States, uh, you know, for any amount of time, I think it's, it's, it's very quick that you begin to adopt that term Latino because you understand that, uh, you know, we kind of all fall on start falling under one umbrella um, and a lot of the things that we care about are very similar and i think also we want to support each other you know it's funny because here and i'm in arkansas right now and in here in arkansas the population of the latino population isn't as 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 strong yet as texas it's getting there but the other day there was a a, a little colombian uh, food truck and i shouldn't say little a colombian food truck open and uh, they put it in the newspaper and i was like you know what let me go look for the colombian restaurant <laughs> this colombian food truck and I go over there and I and I'm talking having a conversation with the guy and we're talking about, oh, you know what? Yeah, this is cool. This is like the second Colombian restaurant that I know about in the area. Uh, but we were talking about Houston. I'm like, no, in Houston, there's tons because we got a huge Colombian co uh, community, huge Venezuelan, huge Guatemalan, huge, uh, you know, from different countries of origin. But at the same time, like as Latinos, like as soon as we like hear you know, there's something happening within our community. We want to gravitate to that and like support that and, and be a part of it because, you know, we understand that there's a unifying, um, there's something unifying that happens when we support each other and that we're all really under that umbrella of Latinos. So I think, uh, you know, from what you're doing, it definitely, I think, blends into all of that as well and that sentiment, that that desire that we have. Yeah, I appreciate it. And then, you know, spending you know, our podcast ends up being about 30 minutes to about an hour um, post-production, but spending four hours like with, with them, with our guests, learning about their cultural nuances and everything like um, till today, the biggest shock was Chile, um, how different Chile was from the rest of, uh, you know, Latin America. Again, you know, I'm from Mexican descent. So our celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month is going to include Mariachi, tequila, mezcal, um, colorful, vibrant colors, uh, the the folkloric dancing and all this that you're gonna see a lot of that. I identify with that 100. Uh, percent I get excited when I see it and everything. But what what we interviewed our, our guest from Chile, and he just blew my mind with his comment when he said, you know, we don't really identify with the rest of uh, Latin America. When you think about Chile we're not these vibrant loud colors or anything and he and then he starts to explain to me he's like we're literally geographically separated from the rest of the latin america by the andes mountains he's like and those were so hard to get over it's treacherous territory is like so coming over to chile we didn't get a lot of the spanish culture um too much that everybody else did that mixed in with indigenous he's like we're still are, we're very nature driven. He's like, at night, you look one side, you see the beautiful Andes Mountains, the other one, you see the ocean and very clear skies because they're, they're high in elevation. He's like, so a lot of us are, our colors are more gray, more toned down, more like neutral earth tones. And, and that's how our people are. So, um, he made, he made a comment how his daughter was supposed to come dressed as her uh, heritage one day to school for like, some some international festival they were doing and he was like how am i supposed to dress my daughter he's like when you think mexican you know immediately how you're dressing this little girl but when you think chile he's like we don't have these like dresses or anything like that and then um that allowed me to really you know understand that the latino spectrum is also very wide right um it's not just one thing and we definitely at least here in houston i speak from what i see it's very heavy on the mexican and the folkloric dancing and the loud and color and vibrant um, and we're leaving out, you know, a part of Latin America that, that doesn't identify that way. They're more about like their ideas and their thoughts. And in our conversation, I was able to explore how beautiful that actually is uh, and how we kind of need to reframe a little bit as Latinos ourselves to celebrate more also the ideas, 
the, the poetry, the more quiet, introspective, deep thinking, thought provoking conversations that may happen con un cafecito or, or uh, uh, you know, in the evening next to a fire, that it's not just like la banda y todo, as exciting as that is, uh, that we also need to focus some attention you know, on the other side. But you know what? I think all of our all of our countries of origin have that. You know, I think we all have the loud and the crazy, but we mm -hmm. also all have like that the the pensive, the quiet, the thoughtful, mm -hmm. the you know, I think that's the beauty of of you know what our um, you know, even like let's talk like let's, let's take Mexico for an example. I mean the diversity in Mexico is so broad that you will find everything within Mexico. And I think that's that runs across the board. When you look at Colombia, when you look at Venezuela, mm -hmm. when you look at Puerto Rico, you see that there's a there's an array uh within our countries of origin mm -hmm. but even that practice of like you know bring dress to school like your country of origin that's so that like it's so crazy that that even happens now because like for a lot of mex i think even me and mexicano like what do i dress up as you know i'm not gonna wear my like, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna wear like you know like i did like at the bailables that we would do yeah. when I was a little i'm not gonna wear that just mm -hmm. to, you know to show my mexicanness <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it seems like a very antiquated like uh yeah you know, mindset uh, mm -hmm. but you know what I, I think the younger generation like yourself you know you guys have a different uh are bringing a different perspective and have a different uh way of looking at things and you know like um i'll share a quick example like this week mm -hmm. I, we went to go see peso pluma here uh in arkansas okay, I saw your uh, social media. <laughs> <laughs> and we found out about it on a, uh you know on a whim we're like oh what but i was looking at the things to do here because you know there's not that much to do so i was like <laughs> let me look for something to do here <laughs> and i looked in the thing and i was like peso pluma i was like what the hell i was like in arkansas i was like okay i'm getting tickets i'm gonna go see this guy uh and the funny thing is, yo, ya que me estaba, like, I, was, we were, I was getting ready, you know, typically when you go to a, a, a you know, regional Mexicano concert, you're going to wear yeah. the boots, you're going to wear the jeans, mm -hmm. you're going to wear the, you know, the <laughs> button, button down shirt. I'm like, it's Peso Pluma. I'm wearing a t-shirt, a shorts, and I'm wearing yeah. some, like, tennis shoes. And like, and sure enough, everybody else in the room, like, was the same way. You know, we're all mm -hmm. like very casual. Uh, and I think that speaks to the the different uh, changing behaviors, I think, mm -hmm. within our culture. Uh, with the younger generations that they're really changing the way we look at things like it's still embracing our culture mm -hmm. but doing it in a much different way than yeah. you know our generation my generation my parents generation you know mm -hmm. would have done it that it's it's much more um you know fluid i think yeah yeah and then for me i mean like i was born in 1990 i look at the people born 2000 or even two you know and i'm just like oh man it's like a radical thinking even more uh, excited about finding these like in their in their case vintage ideas uh mm -hmm. and then bringing a, a new like like which is exactly peso pluma these cor corridos tumbados like it's not um you know i, I love me some tucanes de tijuana tigres del norte like i i still jam to I that like every both. day in my office <laughs> today. yeah and then i hear the new stuff and i was like oh, okay i dig it like there's some cool remixes even lo-fi music i started hearing yeah. lo-fi music taking some of these old songs and i was like Oh, you met you. That's the ideal work, work music for me. Yeah, I mean, look at Bad Bunny. I mean, I think Bad Bunny was Jeez. like on the, at the forefront too, doing some stuff yeah. like that. Um, but we're I, I'm get, I'm veering off into entertainment. But let, <laughs> well, we're but in no, the entertainment no, company, so I know, I know. But tell me about some of your guests. Tell me about some of the conversations that you yeah. had. Tell me about uh, you know how it's going in terms of. Uh, the is this is what your first season second season that you're first season yeah this is this we're still in the first season we, we've got ambitious and did a you know our first season is going to be 23 episodes long <laughs> as our pilot uh but we had to give a shout out to each flag right so we're being intentional it has not been easy finding mexicans and colombians and venezuelans was a piece of cake in houston um <laughs> i'm still struggling finding people from haiti from belize from paraguay from uruguay from Panama, because though, though we don't have as big a population here um, from those countries. So um, if, if whoever's listening, if you know somebody in tech, we're, we're excited to talk to you. Uh, but yeah. I'll tell you about our very first guest, Gustavo Suarez, um, and the reason why we interview. So we interview Latinos in tech. We find out about what makes them a Latino in tech, um, what, what they're doing in the industry. And then we also get to explore their, um, their Latin American heritage in a fun, entertaining way. Um, with him, it was exciting because of what he was doing in tech. He does not know how to code yet. He just got, he got accepted to tech stars, which is a huge like accomplishment. Um, mm -hmm. and he's building a tech company, um, getting some of the code developed in Colombia. He's developed in the very first, uh, Latino payroll platform in America. 
nice. so you know competing against adp uh we'll send some of the other big people but uh built by latinos for latinos uh and targeting that so i thought that was something cool to celebrate also acknowledging that you don't need to know how to code because um, not everybody knows how, but I'm, I'm excited for a future where more people do know because I'm sure the schools are, you know, starting to teach it. Um, so we went to a Colombian restaurant, shout out Mi Pueblito here in Houston, one of the top Colombian places to, to oh, eat. Oh, one of my favorite um, spots. Yeah. yeah. And then my favorite is that we went back to his house, a very intimate, like, you know, setting. Um, and uh, he played the accordion for us and we, we drank some aguardiente. Um, and we got to talk a little bit about all that in the culture. Um, and then the, my favorite location that we have shot at so far was actually for our El Salvador episode with Nelson Vanegas, um, mm -hmm. because we pulled up to a Salvadorian version of like La Michoacana. It was this little mercadito called Los Pipiles uh, up in North Houston. And in the background, you see the ladies pouring like beans in their, in their little grunt, in their little shopping bags and everything, and people picking out like Tipo Michoacana. Um, and I was just so proud because I was like, my tech company is on location at the carniceria, at the, at the mercado, filming and shooting. And, and this is proof that we can connect to the market because we are actually here. And that, that was so exciting for me because it's like, these are the places we grew up at. Like, I'm excited to start, you know, doing some content at La Pulga and stuff mm -hmm. because, you know, w if we are being that bridge, then part of the bridge is me bringing tech to to the locations, uh, to those places. So being at the Little Mercadito was like such a pleasure to me. And when I see that episode, I wanted the thumbnail even to be like, did these fools really shoot a tech podcast inside the Mercado? <laughs> I'm like, yes, yes, we did. Uh, and we had pupusas there and everything where our fingers got messy and all that stuff, but we're still talking about tech and AI and doing all this other stuff. So that's that's the brand that we want to continue. That's the 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 soul that we want to continue to have in the in the podcast i think that's a great intersection in terms of like uh where tech meets meets culture and i think you're bringing it to life you're visualizing it for people i want to get to the food real quick but i want to shout out you mentioned uh bulga and, and i wanted to shout out studio mm -hmm. uh d18 studio d18 okay. uh on instagram man these guys are uh if you haven't looked check them out they're doing amazing stuff from the bulga they are taking uh, pictures, like they're photographers, and they take uh -huh. pictures of people in the Pulga. They were recently uh, featured in the Houston Chronicle, um, and their story is pretty cool. Like I talked to them on the phone, and you know they're telling me a little bit about what they're doing. But it's it was so amazing. I'm like, man, that's that's exactly the, the type of thing that's gonna move, the types of things that are gonna move the needle yeah. are things where you're where you're taking people from within our community, mm -hmm. and we're building, we're helping to bridge that gap. By yes. building, by doing, by, you know, kind of taking that, um, you know, those uh, innate like skills that we have to kind of just make things happen, um, you know, yeah. and we're, we're tying them into different ways. In your case, you're doing it with tech um, and you're tying in tech to the culture. You're bringing us people mm -hmm. to the restaurants, which I think I'm just like, you know, my mouth waters every time you guys are at a, at a good <laughs> restaurant. I'm like, man, <laughs> I want to be there, too. But yeah. getting to the food, like what's been like what's been the most like. Uh, like it's food wise, because I'm a foodie. Like what's food wise, okay. or you know, uh, like uh, you mentioned the 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 what was it Agua Ardiente that you had. See, Aguardiente. Uh, or what's um, the yeah? What was the most uh, enjoyable? The most uh, like thing that you were like, man. Well, I think most enjoyable sweet wise was probably recently. Uh, we like a few days ago we just released our Guatemala episode, and we just tried mm. uh, rellenitos. And now a lot of Latin American countries have the fried plantain. Los Maduros. And okay, okay, places, yeah. As, as yeah, is. I love them. But these people in Guatemala decided to stuff them with like beans and crema and like queso. And oh my oh, God, man. it's it's a whole nother thing. Crema and queso <laughs> and inside queso, of a plantain? Inside of a, well, the crema you, you put on top, but inside they oh, had uh, beans and, uh, and queso. And it was... Okay, you're like, going to have to send me the address to that one. I will, I will. <laughs> yeah, like, like alone, the plantain's delicious, but the Guatemalan, I just... Yeah, it's rellenitos, and it's like a big thing for them. That was delicious. That's probably... That's one of the more more delicious ones, for sure. I mean, li liquor-wise, yeah, aguardiente is aguardiente. It's, <laughs> it's going to go down hard, <laughs> regardless of, uh, of how you take it or what you pair it up with. No, you, you need to, like, uh, you know, do, like, a special... Or, you know, some of your guests are, like... You know those games? Have you seen those games where they're, like... 
either answer the question or you have this drink of this. <laughs> yeah, actually, at our future, you know, one of the future goals is in-person events, like, you know, having little conferences and stuff where you, and you see all of Latin America, it's almost you stepping into the world. Um, yeah. You know, I want to make it a good point because, you know, you go to a Latino event today and you see beer and tequila. Maybe a mezcal sprinkled every once in a while. But, yeah. you know, uh, you have pisco. Pisco doesn't get celebrated. Oh, yeah. um, you have cachaza from pisco Brazil. Sour. That doesn't get See, exactly. So I, I want to also highlight like those, uh, you know, those things like uh, the rum from Nicaragua and from, you know, all, all these different places. We, we know the brands like we sometimes know the liquor, but we don't know the story behind it. We know plenty of tequila. We know the agave azul and the, the, um, the, the whole process. And, you know, so many people have visited, but we don't know too much about the other the other things. So I want to make sure we celebrate uh, up the spirits from the other Latin American countries too. Yeah, no, it's all about inclusivity. And when you put that event together, let me know, because I definitely want to be there. For sure, for uh, sure, yes. So where can people find the podcast? How, how often do you put out episodes? Et cetera, the, tell us all the details. Yeah, so um, how often do we put it out? As fast as we can. Um, <laughs> currently, you know, we're, we're a small team. We're trying to use all the tech tools available out there to help us feel like a bigger production studio. Um, but we're not there yet, but we know we will be pretty soon. So the moment we film, we start editing, editing takes forever. You know, um, <laughs> we realize that, so our, our podcast is in Spanglish, um, mm -hmm. and a lot of these AI tools, they work excellent. If your podcast is in one language, um, yeah. they cut it up, dice it for you and do social media clips and everything for you. As long as you only speak English or only speak Spanish, but since we're going back and forth, they don't work for us they actually mess up our entire, uh, product. So there's an opportunity there that we're exploring to see, to help develop some of this stuff at very early stages. Um, but searching uh, Tech23 um, US uh, or Tech23 US, it's how we are on all of our, our all of our platforms on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and, uh, and YouTube as well. Uh, and hopefully the word Tech23 becomes more popular and the algorithm will help us out and that's all you have to type and, and you'll find it. I think it will be. I think Tech 23 is definitely is it catchy. I think it's definitely something that calls your attention awesome. and immediately you're like, wait, what does Tech 23 mean? And then, and, we're, and the story behind it, I think, is a, is a great one. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to see where you guys are going. But I want to shift a little bit and talk about because we're, we're, we're like gearing up. We're pretty much in Hispanic Heritage, Heritage Month and this episode will probably be within Hispanic Heritage Month. Okay. So I want to get your, um, you know, just your thoughts in general. You know, it's 2023. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a young tech company that's doing things mm -hmm. very differently. What are your thoughts in general about uh, Hispanic Heritage Month? So I'll go back to the comment I made about um, what I learned from Chile. Um, we're all going to be celebrating the music, the food and the culture. And that's going to be great that it deserves its prime time, everything. But let's not forget about the ideas. Um, mm. Who are the great thinkers of your country? Let's give them a stage as well. Let's sh uh, let's like showcase the projects that they're working on, the technology, the books that they've written, the ideas that came, you know, that came from it. Uh, people in STEM, like what things have been invented in your country, right? Like I, I'm probably messing this one up, but I think color television was invented in Mexico, I think. Mm. Um, I remember hearing that somewhere, but I'll double check it later. But um, putting more, put, I would say to the people hosting all the events, put some more attention on the on the ideas and not just the music, because we all want a better future for Latinos. And that's not going to happen from just celebrating the food, the tequilas and the music. We need to put a heavier focus on the ideas. Um, and other than that, I mean, like, go, I, I, I'm excited for it myself. We're having an event at the end of the the year we're testing something out called the the official closing of Hispanic Heritage Month because there's a lot of noise at the beginning. El 15, el 16, el 17, it's like parties everywhere. And then it starts to kind of like quiet down a bit. Uh, so we're testing something out of like being the closing and celebrating again all of Latin America, teaching people that El 15 de septiembre is not just Mexico's Independence Day, but damn near half of the Latin American country celebrated on that same day. But you never really hear about that. Um, and so we, they get overshadowed by, you know, Mexico because we're super loud. <laughs> That's my PSA to, <laughs> to, to them focus on the ideas. And then, um, if you, if you have space, uh, it's like also try to include some of the other Latin American countries because you're sharing, you're sharing your independence day from independence from the same country 
<laughs> on the same day and you had a very very similar story how you gained that independence no and i and i think i think it's still needed i think it's still a uh, um you know a time of the year that i think is really important just to highlight the different contributions of the community uh i i, I like you know i think the partying is great i mean i think the celebrations mm-hmm. the Jeez. colors the music and all of that is great but you're right i think we like we also need a little bit more of the you know kind of the the, the history the all the things mm-hmm. that we that are uh, that we don't often think about that we don't, yeah. don't always see um and so i think that that that's a really good point that you're making now to kind of wrap us up uh, what do you think, or not? What do you think? But what is the future? What are your what are, what's coming up next? What's the what's happening uh, for you guys, yeah. at Tech Twenty Three, etc. So the future for Tech Twenty Three, I want to shout out Afrotech. Afrotech is a organization. They do live events and everything for the Black community. They do an amazing thing. Actually, right now, as we're recording this episode, they're having their conference. Huge event in Austin. People from all around the country are excited that their job approved time off so that they could come to this conference and meet with other uh, 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 Black people in tech. We want to, our future is a version of that for Latinos, that we are the events, the conference, and it's built on a platform for multiple podcasts. And we talk about, you know, our our first season right now is a Latino and tech from each one of the Latin American flags. But eventually we want to branch out on like uh, the different sectors in in tech. So all the Latinos working in health tech, because there's so much there. Latinos working in cybersecurity, because there's so much there. Latinos, uh, you know, in in uh, transportation tech and everything going on in, in that uh, in that field. Eventually, we want to continue to grow in our team, um, where we can handle the production of uh, technology in multiple sectors. Pero también our in-person events, because there's something special that happens at every tech conference and conferences in general. When it's not Latino based, it's just the general audience. You walk in the room and you hear Spanish. You immediately turn around and be like, "Where's my people at?" And I don't know what you call that feeling, but imagine, I, I can't wait to be able to build something where the entire like uh, area is that feeling um, where where it's um, you're not sitting for like a boring presentation. You're engaged, you're active. Um, everybody here, you know, has given corazón para ayudarse uno al mismo. And because we've established from the very beginning, we are a collaborative effort. If anybody is trying to divide us because maybe because of a term or because of like back in our home countries, our two countries don't necessarily get together, whatever. Like we're running away from that. We're all about unity, collaborating, growing together, and then celebrating things that we don't know. We, we, I want everybody to come in with a curious mind and, uh, and excited to just try new things, taste new things, talk to new people. Um, and I believe that that's going to be something popular. So Afrotech does that very, very well. Uh, and I'm excited to see little pockets and conversations happening across the country already. Um, so we want to help build that. And the future of Tech 23 is looking back. And when we see the data, of what how, what the percentage is of Latinos working in tech, that it's not 8%, that, you know, we're looking at, you know, 25, 30, 45% of Latinos working in tech. So obviously you'd have a multitude of executives, of startup founders, of leadership, and then just people working in the industry as well, making the products that we're using every day, like much, much better and more in tune with like, with us. So we can use them better. And, you know, like AI right now, it's such a, (laughs) AI is so new, but there's very little Latinos working into it, in it. Um, And I don't want that to happen. I want to, I want to inject AI as much as we can uh, into the Latino community right now so that we don't fall behind so that we don't start using it five, 10 years from now. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the other thing is like, uh, you know, people that are that, that, that are doing it and, you know, maybe they're like, this is a place for you. This isn't, you know, you may be, feel like you're alone. You may feel like there aren't others, but you know, the, uh, this is like, it's just a matter of like, uh, making kind of putting a call out you know putting the batman sign up and being like hey where are my latinos at <laughs> it all silent todos salimos, no? because we're like, oh i didn't know they were like <laughs> yeah that's not a bad idea so i wonder how much yeah. one of those cost <laughs> 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 of but uh, but i think the collaboration is great i mean not only within mm-hmm. our own community but like you mentioned like afrotech and you know i think mm-hmm. there's a lot of like um similar like shared paths shared interests that we have mm-hmm. Uh, between the uh, African American community and the Latino community, so I think it's great that we yeah. learn from each other, great with each other. Um, mm-hmm. You know, when we're when we're building these new things, when we're building these new new pathways and new thing, new ways of thinking and doing things. So that's that's amazing, Jose. Uh, anything else that you want to share? Any any last thoughts that yeah. you have? Yeah, yeah. So um, we you the name Padrinos and Madrinas comes when. 
there's a special event in a Latino's life, a quinceañera, una boda, and the community steps up, your family steps up to help you with certain expenses so that you can you can make the event happen, the special moment in your life. So we decided that we needed that for the birth of Tech 23 because obviously any startup has expenses and we were doing a media company so we would need cameras and software and all these other different things. So when we made a call out to the community that we needed some help, you know, with the, with Padrinos and Madrinas to help us with the birth of, of this and this idea, um, I want to shout out you and your wife because you guys stepped up uh, and you said yes and you helped us out. And, you know, every at, at this stage of our of Tech 23's uh, growth, every dollar makes a huge, and Latin America, every peso and, you know, whatever you, sold, you want to send from down there makes a huge difference. So <laughs> I, want to, I want to thank you and the rest of our Padrinos that stepped up to help us because... Uh, yeah, right now every everything has helped, and um, we're, we've ex- we've been excited to see the impact in the community, the feedback from people being like, "Yes, I want more of this. Like, let's do it more." So, in my head, I was like, "Okay, I just need more money. <laughs> I need to hire some people and grow a team and everything." But uh, we're excited for the journey. We're learning a lot. We're drinking from a water hose right now, uh, from a fire hose. I mean, and, um, and and but it's exciting. We know we're doing good work. We see the the community responding. And yeah, we're grateful with God. Que nos está pasito a pasito. Ahí vamos. Yeah. So Absolutely. Thank you. No, that. no. Thank, thank you for saying that. Uh, and I, and we were happy to do it. Um, I have to give credit to my wife because she's the one that brought it to my attention and was like, Juan, we got to do this. We got to we got to support. Uh, and I think that's because you know we 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 we've been around the block a few times. You know, we were from a we're older than you guys, and you know we we've been in the situation where we haven't had that support. So uh, you know now when you're like it's like a, I think it's a lot of us feel the same way in the community. A lot of Latinos feel the same way in the community. That we want to help each other out. We want to be able to like, and see, see stand and and then look at puedes and look and look at you know that what you're able to do. Then why not? You know why not support? Why not like do that? And I think that that you know now you're doing it. Now you're supporting others. Now you're building with others. And I think it's a chain reaction. You know like, and I think that's what's gonna move the needle for us is that we like get out of our silos, and support each other. Yeah, cien por ciento. Yeah, all in agreement. Yeah. <laughs> Man, uh, this is a great conversation, Jose. I can keep I can keep you here and keep you talking, but I know you're a busy guy. You got more stuff to do, <laughs> and you got more food to eat, more more podcasts to see, record. See, so see, see, see. I'm excited yeah. to see where, where else you're going next. Awesome. Uh, thank you for joining. Thank you for the conversation. If you guys uh, enjoyed this conversation, go follow Tech Twenty Three US or Tech Twenty Three mm-hmm. Us. Um, on social mm-hmm. media, on all platforms. Um, and then leave us a comment, leave us your uh, rating, and we'd love to hear from you about what you thought about this conversation and uh, definitely what you think about what Jose is doing. So with that, Perfect. nos vemos pronto. Gracias. Adios.